<laughs> what is going on everybody? Depraved Slasher here. We are back with another video reaction. I'm Depraved. I'm Hellcat. And together we are Hella Depraved. Alright, so for our other option, we also pulled from What Culture Horror. Um, they actually had several interesting options that came out this past week. Right. Um... She picked kind of the other one. I kind of picked this one. We kind of jointly picked, but mm -hmm. these these all sound, sounded kind of interesting. So this is eight hilarious moments in otherwise truly terrifying horror video games. And so what this is going to be is they're going to take a game that is typically known to be very scary, right? And they are going to show moments that are just are silly. just absolutely hilarious. Right. One moment I'm fully expecting, and if it's not in it, it'll I'm be sad. Going to be heavily disappointed. There is a game by the name of um, Layers of Fear. And there is a point in the game where you're running down the hallway, or you're, wa well, you're walking down the hallway, and this baby runs across the screen out of nowhere and takes off down the hallway. And there's a way you can kind of glitch it where this baby keeps coming after you cross at, at a certain yeah. point so you can back up and cross back over and he'll continue to run and some way something fucks up and the baby starts running from the other direction and runs right into the dresser and falls over oh dear and the first time I had it happen to me I sat there for 15 fucking minutes on a live stream doing it. backing up and oh, walking no. forward and losing my shit of course you did. And it's supposed to be this terrifying video game that scares the shit out of you which it did actually a pretty good job the first one did so, I don't play video games, guys, so I won't know most of these, but still, I'm here for this. I think the last game that I played that was a horror game, which, by the way, horrified my parents equally, was um, Phantasmagoria, and it was a computer game. And it I was had like, that game. It was like eight CDs, something like that, and um, my parents were... Uh, oh, so God, that's not fantastic. That's not the one I have. My dad... Uh, played King's Quest with me and all of them computer games growing up is. so I went from this peaceful I mean mostly peaceful there, there were some parts that were more like kind of like Nightmare Before Christmas-esque um, peaceful game that's all oh I don't know task oriented to this game that is uber creepy and kind of more like missed in terms of there's not really a map or what you're supposed to be doing, things just sort of organically happen. But it's it was creepy, and my parents were not thrilled. No, in fact, I think that CD set went missing when I was gone for one weekend. Very possible. Yeah, yeah. They. It is what it is. But I'm here for it. All right. So with that being said, we're going to react to this. If you guys have already seen it, if not, click the link in the description below. Hop on over to all the things. Come back. We'll do that because we're a commentary reaction breakdown comedy channel commentary yeah i said comedy twice um with that what that means is we will pause for any or all of the above not really be much breaking down obviously because it's not right. a song unless we are hysterically losing it and then that could be that could be a different kind of breakdown. breakdown yeah mental breakdown right with, of the funny bone variety there you go <laughs> i think that's just called being broken i don't think that's called breaking down you're just broken at that point oh okay all right all right so with that, I said, with that being said, it's time to slash it up and uh, watch it. All right. This is What Culture Horror with eight hilarious moments and otherwise truly terrifying horror video games. Let's get it. Horror, whatever the medium, is a surprisingly hard emotion to elicit from an audience. A lot of people confuse it with... I will tell you now, the first game that he showed, it's actually a demo called P.T. Mm-hmm. And is the only game I have ever played that when I finally finished the fucking demo, even though I was super excited because it was like a secret trailer. It was called a PT Stuff for Playable Teaser. Right. It was a secret trailer for the next Silent Hill game that was supposed to come out that eventually got cancelled. But it's the only time I've ever played any kind of video game. It took me about six, seven hours to get through. And when I finished it, I was terrified. Like, I could not get then to sleep. And it's almost sad that they didn't four put... four to five hours. That's why I was excited for the game to yeah, come out. Yeah, that's sad. I was like, dude, if the trailer alone is that good? had these feelings in so me happen. Because it is. Uh, he's absolutely correct. Like, we've, we've mentioned with uh, movies, you, you, you get bored, or you think it's funny, or, yeah. 
It was uh, so Hideo Kojima was the guy that was making designing the game. He's right. very famous for uh, Metal Gear Solid and things right. like that. And it, it was actually being directed and written by Guillermo del Toro or whatever the fuck his actual name is. Guillermo. Dude is a horror mastermind. He absolutely is. I'll give him that for and sure. They did a good job with the PT, and I am still sad that we did not get. Yeah, apparently. This part in this game scared the shit out of me too. This was uh, Outlast. Jump scare though. Shock or surprise thanks to the over reliance on jump scares in films and video games, which can be garnered actually quite easily. You could drop a piece of cutlery from a table and shock someone who didn't see it coming with as great an effect as a face appearing behind somebody for a split second in a mirror. But fear, or quasi-fear if you want to get technical on the other hand, well that's much harder. This requires setup, direction, pacing, and information about the threat of danger that is being presented to the audience without them being explicitly told. It's a suspension of disbelief that is easily broken, and there are many examples of horror video games that unfortunately drop the ball on this without sometimes even meaning to, and even a few examples of developers intentionally highlighting the silliness of the situation in order to blow off a little steam. So you know what, let's take a look at when fear fell flat on its face for a few seconds as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight hilarious moments in otherwise truly terrifying horror video games. He's having a giraffe already. That's one of his little catchphrases. Ah, uh, okay. I love Jules. He's probably my favorite what culture person. Okay. He is hilarious. Alright. So he picked a good more. person to yeah, okay. do this video. Number eight, mansion basement music. Resident Evil Director's Cut. The original Resident Evil is rightly held up as a true survival horror classic. It's a Resident Evil, the very first Resident Evil, is the reason I don't get scared in video games anymore. Unless I run across something like PT that actually does it. Right. So, the very first time I ever played the first Resident Evil, I was about six or seven years old. I had gone over to my uncle's house, and he had it on PlayStation, and he didn't tell me what it was. He said, hey, I'm going to go lay down. Have fun. Because um, he was uh, disabled. I don't even remember what it was that he had. He's like, but I'm going to go lay down. There's a PlayStation. There's some games over there. Pop one in. Play. Have fun. And I'd seen Resident Evil. Never heard of it. Nothing. I put it in the PlayStation. I start playing it. I'm like, ooh, it's a scary game. Right. And I was excited, because even at six, seven years old, I love horror it. games. So the first thing I do... When I get into the house in the game, I'm like, I wonder what happens if I just decide to say, fuck it, and leave. Uh-oh. I'm just going to leave the fucking mansion. So I turn around, do the animation on the front door, and it does the whole thing that it does throughout the rest of the game, where whenever you go to walk through doors, it cuts to a door being there, and it right. opens, and it goes into that animation, and then all of a sudden, dogs jump through, and you like close the door on their head and then eventually you push them out and close the door but that one jump scare scared the shit out of me and from that moment on in almost any horror video game I ever play I'm always expecting something, something to happen to in happen. every moment right. which has ruined being scared jump scares in video yeah. games yeah. it sucks thank you Resident Evil I mean it would have happened sooner or later but you know right the original Resident Evil is rightly held up as a true survival horror classic. Its incredibly tight direction and use of fixed camera angles create a sense of claustrophobic dread in nearly every scene. This, coupled with enemies that would not take the hint and go down quickly, and a scarce lack of ammo, makes for a runtime of pure exhilarating terror from start to finish. Then in comes the voice acting, and yes, it has definitely been mentioned several times over that this, well, wasn't the best. Stop it! Don't open that door! However, it's become entwined with wow. the experience, and it's almost cruel to mock it. <laughs> you could be a Jill. You were almost. He says, "Uh, you were almost a Jill sandwich." Fun oh times. dear. Even if Jill sandwiches and masters of lock pickings aren't the only ham that is on the menu, Barry, the please, ham. my man, calm it down. But in truth, there's actually a moment that shatters the immersion of fear even more than these cheesy vocal skills, and that is found in Resident Evil's director's cut mansion basement music. This track is, uh, how do I put it, ungodly in how hilarious it sounds. Oh, oh dear. Skip. To my loo. 
This track is, uh, how do I put it, ungodly in how hilarious it sounds, and while it does possess an attempt at using stacked notes and uncomfortable pacing to try and make the player feel dread, it comes across like something a clown would have as his ringtone. It might well be one of the most infamously terrible pieces of video game music ever, and actually only serves to remind us all that while the original composer for this game was reportedly deaf, that turned out to be a decades-long ruse and that he had a ghost composer write this and other tracks for him. And you know what, that doesn't explain why this track is so bad when the actual composer was able to hear. Still it doesn't stop it from being hilarious. Number 7. I mean, it sounds like some kids practicing their instrument. It's awful. Band practice for seven year olds. Right. Um, now I will shout out, Resident Evil is actually one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. Uh, the video games are why I cannot even enjoy the movies. Right, I know. And I, 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 the first one's actually not bad. I do like the first Resident Evil movie, but it pissed me off so much that, like... They're not in the mansion. They're not in the mansion. And it, it was just such a far reach from the video games. But, video game-wise, I love the series. I have only beaten two of them, personally. I have watched almost every single one get beaten by my best friend. Um... Code Veronica is still my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen some of them, by the way, for those, like, other people playing uh, them, but I have seen them. Silent Hill is another fantastic video game franchise. Now, I did like the first Silent Hill movie. Yeah. The second one's not bad, but it's not as good as it's the first. It's not bad. Like, honestly, for a video game sequel movie, it was actually pretty good. First one's fantastic. One of the things I love so much about the Silent Hill franchise is the fog was an accident. At least to the level that it was at. Oh, okay. So, one of the creepy things about being outside in the Silent Hill video games, at least the first couple of them, is there's an over... Um, like, there's an immense amount of fog mm -hmm. on the maps. And while they put... They did put the fog in there on purpose, they didn't expect it to come off as creepy as it did because they were using it as a way to hide assets not being able to load right. in as quickly. Um, and it actually just added to the ambiance and, yeah. of the game and worked and made it even Beautiful. creepier and fantastic. Beautiful. The dog ending. Silent Hill 2. Never has a video game made me shriek with terror so often and then have ended in such a manner that made me laugh so hard as Silent Hill 2 has. This game might well be the peak of psychological horror in video games, as its finger-on-the-pulse approach to scripting, enemy design and overall atmosphere are second to none. However, as you might expect from anyone who spends too long in the foggy town of Silent Hill, there's quite a lot of mad moments that are hidden throughout, but nothing as unexpectedly hilarious as the dog end which you can get by either completing the game three times with the default ending or once with the much harder rebirth ending. It's worth the extra hours of work though because <laughs> witnessing James Sunderland what? drop to his knees after realizing that all of the horrifying events that he'd been experiencing were due to the actions of a dog operating a computer is just perfectly priceless. Although the fact that the man is so distraught and it does appear that the dog is attempting to feed on his tears does mean the comedy of the scene also carries with it some dark undertones, but it does seem like they patch things up come the other comedy endings in the franchise. So there we go. Number yeah. six. Honestly looks like the dog was just Hey, you okay? Why so sad? Now, I, I love that ending. There was another UFO ending. I don't remember if that was for two or one. That was also just out there. Uh, and that is something Silent Hill has always done really well. Is they always... And honestly, I, th I feel like any good game should have multiple endings that you get by completing different things right. in the game. Um, I mean, it gives you a reason to do it multiple times. Yeah. Right. And... Uh, I feel like Silent Hill always did a really good job of having like two or three really good serious endings and then having like one or two just off the wall goofy right what the hell is Lighten this comedy the, ending the mood kind of yeah um now Alone in the Dark I never played Alone in the Dark they say driving controls I'm actually surprised they didn't put uh oh damn what is the name of that fucking game there's one game that the driving controls were just t it's why I quit playing the game if I can remember it, we'll see. They might even the game itself might even make this list. Oh dear. Um, it's like a, it's a cult hit though. Okay. Um, right. In video gaming, uh, and I wanted to like I loved the story of it, but the controls were just so terrible. Especially, it's, it's hopefully it's on the list somewhere. But I figured driving wise, it would have beat this out. 
So we'll see. If I can, and if not, I'll try to remember it. Driving Controls, Alone in the Dark 2008. Now, while it's fair to say that the reboot slash pseudo sequel of Alone in the Dark that dropped in 2008 didn't hit all of the marks it intended to when it came to providing a consistent horror experience, there were moments of true terror to be found within which were admittedly pretty brilliant, and a lot of the tension actually came from the game's use of fire, seeing as it could spread and destroy the environment if left unchecked. This, coupled with enemies that would often require you to use molotovs or fire against them, could see even an empty room end up as an inferno by the end of things. However, one section that definitely didn't set the world on fire and in fact provided an unintentionally hilarious moment for players came when Edward Carnby takes control of a car. This action sequence on paper sounds like a brilliant way to up the stakes by having Edward careen through a collapsing city, leaping over gaps and skidding around corners. It's just a shame that the car handles like it was ripped from bloody Deadly Premonition. The jumps could glitch out that and- Deadly Premonition was. was the game. <laughs> That's what I thought they would have gone with right. because Deadly Premonition's driving- Was awful. Was awful. Great story right. as a whole. But that took you out of the- yeah. But I, literally the first time, and it's early on in the game, the first time I, I drove, I was like, I wasted 15 bucks buying this game. Oh, God. Sorry, guys. Motion sickness. Um, but they actually, so they just re-released Deadly Premonition on Switch not long ago. And they're supposed to be either, it's either out now or they're making a sequel to it or prequel. I don't remember. But right. Story-wise, fantastic game. But fantastic game. hopefully they redid those. And best of all, if you got too far ahead of the scripting, you could end up driving into invisible walls which were blocked off where chunks of the road would eventually fall down or be pushed up. As a result, it went from being alone in the dark one levels of creepy to alone in the dark movie levels of awful unintentional comedy. Number five, Pizza Prank Call, Blair Witch. 100% one of the best horror games I have played in a long time. Really? This was the last game I think I remember streaming. Okay. Or maybe putting videos now, out Now, again, on my I'll, I'll state in terms of movies, hate the first Blair Witch. Really liked the second one that you showed me, which I had never given a chance because I figured it was going to be the same sort of filmed found footage, which it is found footage, just not... I, I, I can't watch the first one. Right. Uh, and it's just not that interesting. Um, this game, though... It was made by it was made by Bloober Team, same people that make um, Layers of Fear, and I love Layers of Fear. Right. Um, but they they did Blair Witch, and it ended, like I said, it ended up being one of my favorite horror games in a long time. I was okay. like, they did so well with this game. Now I did not get scared, mind you. A lot of but people did. But it was did. a really really good game. But it was just a really good game in general. One of the quiet surprises of 2019 was the arrival of a new Blair Witch game, which likely came to the delight of horror video game streamers who now had yet another year's worth of reaction faces on tap. And while the game did stumble a few times across its narrative, it did manage to nail the sheer tension of feeling isolated in a moody wood, all the while feeling like you're being hunted by an unseen force. You could swear down that you saw something behind a tree ahead and there were moments of sheer terror <laughs> when your dog would me. just run off and leave you alone. And it's not like you could just call for help because, as is now typical of the horror industry, the evil forces at work here were capable of messing with your phone signal. However, it's exactly this interface that allows for one of the sole funniest moments of the game to emerge, for if you keep phoning the pizza delivery service listed on your mobile, you'll spark an outburst from the employee who threatens to come down there and kick your ass. But you know what, to be honest, with everything else in this forest being against me, I could actually use a bit of that spice. You know what, mate? Come down and pitch in. Number four, right. easy mode. <laughs> um, You're like, sure, bud. Come deliver. Now, I never actually got to have that happen. But I never thought ahead to try and call... Call multiple times? Different people. Oh, okay. I literally just called people when I was told to. Oh. And progressed with the game and moved on. I didn't try to like experiment too much on different things. Right. I'm just not that guy. I usually try to get through the story of a video game, move on to the next one. Unless, of course, it's one that has multiple endings or something that makes you want to play it multiple times, in which case, right. you know. Um, the only game I've beaten multiple times, and it didn't even have different endings. Um, two games, actually. The first one was called Max Payne. It was mm -hmm. the original Max Payne. And I beat it about 11 times total. Um, 
I had every character memorized where they were on the maps and had to because basically the way it was set up, you had the first three difficulties. Right. And then they had four or five extra difficulties that you only unlocked after beating it on the previous difficulty. I got it. Okay. All so right. I beat it on the normal difficulty probably about three, four times before I started progressing up that ladder because I wanted to make sure that I had an you idea had of what was going yeah. on. Um, and I beat it on every subsequent difficulty except for the very last one, which was called a New York Minute. And it was pretty much if you got hit by one bullet, you died. You died. Yeah. It was In a New York so Minute. Tough. I mean, I made it yeah. about halfway through the game, and I got to the part I knew I was going to get stuck at, which is when you get surrounded inside a warehouse, top floor and bottom floor of people that just come in and start shooting down at yeah, you. I know. And I was I didn't have any slow motion time stored up. I didn't have You're any like, health stored up. No, no, I was dead. It was terrible. And then the other one, Final Fantasy VIII, which I've beaten five, six times. Um, All right. Yeah, I've never played Soma, so it's going to be another first person. So you're going to have uh, to stare off into the distance. Yeah. Oh, I guess I could unmute it. Whoops. I don't know. On a pitch in. Number four, easy mode, Soma. One thing that people pretty much accept universally is that horror games are meant to be challenging. It's this aspect of the survival in the survival horror genre that truly ekes out all of that juicy fear, and titles in this genre will constantly look to depower the player wherever possible. Enemies that can't be killed, scarce ammo and health packs, and of course, having you die in as few hits as possible. These are the tricks of the trade, which makes it all the more hilarious that Soma, an otherwise terrifying experience, does away with most of these in its easy mode. Seeing an easy mode in any survival but horror game is a little strange, but I commend the developers for realizing that sometimes people just want to experience the story but might not have the skills to see it through. However, the knock-on effect of this is that this easy mode actually means that the enemies never attack you. As you can imagine, this turns the game into an absolute farce, because how are you ever meant to find something threatening when it's been programmed not to do you any harm? It was a good idea, but just maybe not one that was executed at the benefit of the game's atmosphere. Number three. All right. Okay. So, I've never played Soma. But I will say I have played another game it was terrible, by the way. That I put it on safe mode because the game was designed that it was a very story driven game, but if you died, it started you completely back oh, over. Oh, from the beginning from instead the beginning. of the save point? And I went through and played it for like two hours and barely made any progress, and it was so frustratingly. Di it was a horror game, but it wasn't scary, it was just difficult. Right. And aggravating. I mean, like, I, I can see the benefit, but again, he's he's right that if they can't hurt you and you don't have to be stealthy, then you do lose a lot of atmosphere points. Right. But I again, he pointed out some people might want to see the story through, and I, I get that too. But when that happens, I would actually more implore people to just watch somebody play it on YouTube. So that way, at least you're still getting the scare factor. The scare, yeah. Um, now that that's an option, yeah. And still seeing the story unfold, so... I've never played Dying Light. I know somebody... I started to once. And uh, the people that I was playing with decided... I know that wasn't even Dying Light. I've never played Dying Light. All right. I was thinking of... Um, Island of the Dead? Dead Island? Dead Island. Okay. Anyways. Exploding Teddy. Dying Light. Dying Light is a game that teaches you, quite painfully so, to be aware of your surroundings. While it is indeed possible to leap over the heads of the infected with your outstanding parkour skills, there's danger around every corner. And with some enemies like the Volatile that can batter the piss out of you at a moment's notice, it pays to look, listen, and plan every step of your escape. And it's exactly these things, rather ironically, that you have to ignore in order to get one of the funniest Easter eggs in the game and a brilliantly silly weapon. For if you happen to stumble across this pink teddy bear in the kindergarten area of Old Town and repeatedly press its nose, the bear will grow increasingly more agitated. 
After I receiving too. too many prompts, the bear will, in a fit of extreme product recall, explode, knocking the player on their asses. However, it's totally worth it because now in its place is a blueprint for the stasis field projector, a custom grenade which, when thrown, lifts enemies off the ground and freezes them in place. Talk about breaking the immersion, right? Now, instead of running away from the hordes of infected in an extreme variant of cat and mouse, you can literally just sweep them off their feet and then slash away, laughing maniacally as you do so. Number two. That's exactly how I would approach that. Now, that is actually super dope. That... Okay, so one of the things Resident Evil 2 did... Who figured out to aggravate a teddy bear? Okay. One of the things Resident Evil 2 did that was ingenious was in one of the police station desk drawers. You could open it up. Um, and nothing initially happens when you open it up. But if you open it up 50 times, or push the button 50 times to open it up, you'll actually get a picture out of it. And it's things like that, because, that, like, obviously the first person that ever found it without a strategy guide had to have just been bored. Right. I, or I, gone I, back I to that desk I completely get it, because, like, the, the King's Quest games and stuff that I played with my dad were those types of games without, you know, the jump scares and everything like that, but it was very much, like, task-oriented, but you, you only had so much space in your satchel. You needed certain items to combine at the right time right. to unlock things if you went to the next level or whatnot and had to leave some items behind. You might find out later that you needed them, in which case you had to go back. So, like, I get it, because... Unless you, you know, use the red decoder and cheat and go through the book and everything. Right. Like, you are supposed to figure it out yourself, and part of that is touching everything, so on and so forth. So I get it, but on the other hand, 50 freaking times? Yeah. Like, I, so I'm not that I'm, gal. I'm guessing... Five. The, uh, so obviously, initially, after the first person figures out, word of mouth takes over. And then they count, and then it gets... Right. Yeah. Um, but my guess is the first person that ever caught it without looking it up probably did so by constantly looking for something else. Right. And just kept coming back to that desk. Right. Because they're like, there's got to be something here. Yeah, they weren't just sitting there doing this. Yeah, they... Now, once the word's out, you just sit there and do this. Exactly. And say, I'm getting this picture. Exactly. It does absolutely nothing for the story, but I'm but, getting but this I'm picture. But I'm getting it, right. Um, so I think that's similarly to what happens here, except in this one, there's actually a visual cue. So somebody probably pushed that teddy bear's nose and noticed that his, his eyes, eyes squinted a little bit and was probably like... His eyebrows started what? slanting and they're like, What's oh, this? something's going to happen. Let's do it again. And it gets a little more angry right? and then finally explodes. And But I love that they gave you a powerful weapon schematic out of it. In a pink teddy bear. Because it's like you took a lot of damage, you did something stupid. Right. But they're like, but for doing something stupid, here's something you can make that is totally useful. I wonder, and like, how permanent the damage of blowing yourself up is, too. You can heal. I it, Well, so. yeah, but a lot of these games, like, it takes you X amount of time to heal, or you had to store it up, or, you know, I'm just wondering, like, what happens immediately after that, like, if there is the potential that the damage you did to yourself could end up causing you to die because you were underprepared going into it. You know, right. that's how my brain works. So Visage is actually Scheme's number one horror game all time. Oh, okay. Um, I, I knew I had heard I, it from somewhere. I definitely think it's up there. Okay. Uh, in terms of scariness. Um, so it's very much what Silent Hill could have been based off the PT demo. Somebody took the PT demo and just... Uh, they didn't like redo it. It should have happened. But they made a game with the same kind of visuals and right. things like that. They um, were like, hey, this worked, and they decided not to go with it, so... And I actually seen, so this was something, I don't, I, I know they kept it in the game, I just don't remember at what point you can access it in the game now. The dance party? But, so this game, when it released, it released one episode at a time. Oh. Um, and after beating the first episode originally, you could find this. Okay, alright. This Easter egg, so to speak. Right. Um, but it's actually pretty cool. Dance Party Visage 
There is so, so much to love about Visage that it's actually very difficult to put into words. However, I will bloody well try. Beginning life, ironically, with the death of P.T., this spiritual successor with actual spirits was a Kickstarter project that sought to take the tight and brilliantly directed tone of the aforementioned Konami Bash demo and turn it into a full game. The results were absolutely brilliant, with every single encounter resulting in sweaty palms and soiled oh, pants. Cool. And this is all down to some wonderful use of lighting, expertly crafted audio engineering, and a clear love of the horror genre from the developers being allowed to shine through. In fact, it's this adoration for the subject material that meant that this game is full of nods to other horror franchises, and one of the scariest and then most hilarious comes in the form of a Silent Hill 4 reference that can be found if the player completes the game once and then boots the experience back up once more. Upon doing so, they'll find a key in their inventory that unlocks a safe. Inside the safe is a scrap of paper with Room 302 scrawled on it. Advancing through the game, we'll see them come to the notable room and be able to use the key Hey, if you so if you ever wanted to know, this is one of the primary reasons I never got into gaming. Yeah, she gets motion sick. I very easily. Very easily. on it. Advancing through the game, we'll see them come to the notable room and be able to use the key revealing the room from Silent Hill 4. It's amazing to see the location in such detail, but before you get too close a look, the lights begin to pop and a sense of dread begins to rush through you. What's going to happen? Are you going to be safe? Well, the answer to that is yes, you are going to be safe, but you'll also be jumping out of your seat when you see this dancing spirit shake a move. It is bizarre and unexpectedly hilarious and I love it. And number It's a rave. That's awesome. So when I first seen so, ooh, I, I watched somebody play through this game. Um, it was so I started watching um, Joy play it. Okay, okay. Um but I wanted to see more of it, so I started going around to other people and seeing if, you know, basically watching in clips right. as progressed through the game. And it was back when the first, it was just the first episode that was out. And the first time I seen that happen, like, all of us were kind of like, what? first off, when you open the door, you're like, that's Silent Hill 4. Right. Um, that That's that's so cool that they included that, and all of a sudden the lights start going off, and everybody's like, oh, no. Yeah. And it's then coming. all of a sudden she comes on and she starts fucking dancing. We lost our shit. It was one of the funniest moments in an otherwise tense video game. Right. Well, I mean, and that's why they're so funny. Because you are so tense, and then it completely breaks the tension, and it's that kind of nervous release of laughter. Right. Honestly, kind of like that Akita running the whole Silent Hill thing. I, I mean, that that's what it is. Right. And it's great. It's, it's fabulous. I also give her a 9 out of 10. For, not for, being able for to her moves, well. yeah, 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 just like you know, I can understand that. Yeah. Number one, the Spring Break trailer, Friday the Thirteenth, the game. Despite officially being as dead as one of Jason's many, ah. many victims thanks to legal issues preventing ah. the game from having any new work being done on it, Friday what? the Thirteenth, the game was a genuinely fun experience. What? All right. So Friday the Thirteenth, in my opinion, is a decent game. They tried to take what Dead by Daylight did and change it up to where, A, you're only ever going against a Jason. Now, they did have Jasons from different versions of Jason. Yeah, but so it was still Jason. Different moves, different um, Masks, weapons. Different, yeah. Um, one of the things... So, Dead by Daylight gets shit on a lot in terms of gameplay-wise because every level, it's literally the same thing. It's just a different level. It's, right. Repair four or five generators. Right. Get the doors open. Leave the level. You're going to have a different killer, though. It'll have different killers, yeah. other survivors. You have different perks to play with, things like that. But that is it's the gist okay. of every single level. Whereas this gave you a few different ways for you to be able to survive Jason. One, it's there's a time limit. If you can stay alive for a certain amount of time in the game, okay. daylight will come. Without even getting out of certain areas? Which is what Dead by Daylight, you have to get through the... Right. Okay, all right. Um, it's it, Well, the way the time limit works, though, is you get to a certain point, um, you also have to, like, call the cops. It's like you call the cops and you can run to the edge of the map and run out the map. Yep. 
Okay. Um, to where the cops are sitting. Okay. All right. Um, another way you can repair a car, and there's usually usually two cars per map. Um, one car is a two seater. One car is a four seater. Okay. Um, you repair the car. Four survivors again. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. So I think if I remember correctly, this game had like six to eight survivors. Okay. Okay. Um, but like you could repair a car, um, and and that took finding um gas, the keys, X number of things, and then something else, right. and getting them all together, and each one took like skill check things of course. that took time to do. Um, same thing with the boat. You had to, you could repair a boat and get out on boat. Okay. Or, or you could kill Jason, but the only way to kill Jason was this insane amount of ri just ridiculous shit you had to do, like. You had to find his shack, and when you find his shack, you had to get his mom's head, or get his mom's head and sweater, or maybe it was just sweater. I don't remember, but like, you put it on, it causes him to get like paralyzed or something, and then with Tommy Jarvis, you actually have to have Tommy Jarvis. So, and the only way to get Tommy Jarvis in the game is somebody has to die, and then they come back as Tommy Jarvis as a character, and then like you have to shoot him so many times, knock his mask off. It's oh my God. like I said, it's a ridiculous match. It's like the movie, through. yeah. Okay. Um, but anyways, one thing I feel they did do right. I prefer the generator aspect because I feel it's a little more evenly balanced. It's right. There's things you can do to, because like if he stops you from getting, like if he stops you from and a group of people from working on a car, it's really hard to get the car done at that point because he knows a people are working on that car. Right. He's and. And B, he actually kills people really easily. Okay. So Whereas the generator, I'm good enough, and obviously I'm sure if I played this a lot more, I could have been good enough to figure ways out on this too. But on Dead by Daylight, typically, I know how to gin hop in a way that confuses most killers. Right. To where I could easily, over time, get a generator done that I need in order to get out of the map. Right. right. Um, okay. But the one thing this game did do is custom kills with Jason, or... Or special kills. Right. So, like, whereas Dead by Daylight, it's hang people on a hook three times, they right. automatically die. Or if you have what is called a, a, a Mori, and you have that access to it, after you hook them the first time, the Mori opens up for that character. Right. And each killer has their own special Mori that they do to people. Mm hmm But this has environmental kills and things like that. Like, if you're out by a birdbath... You will grab the dude by the throat, lift him up, and choke slam them onto the bird bath. You can put their head in a door okay. and no, slam no, the door that, and smash their head. That's more interesting. Right. So I wish Dead by Daylight incorporated something like that. Right. But still kept some of its features. Right. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that's. Devs who just want to make a fun game. From having any new work being done on it, Friday the 13th, the game was a genuinely fun experience. Well, fun in that it was amazing to stalk through the woods as Jason and himself, but an absolute terror to be on the receiving end of this because being one of the survivors Ouch. is just bloody pant wetting. Ah. To see this hulking figure storm out of the bushes should come with a health warning for what it does to your heart. However, that doesn't mean that the franchise was all death and decapitations. Ah. Enter the Spring Break Pack, which was a collection of very 80s and very gaudy swimsuits for the counselors to wear. Now, right. on its own, this pack would be of little mention. However, the fact that it came with a brilliantly over-the-top trailer makes it worth taking Fair note. Watch. As the group all go about their dancing, swimming, and, uh, well, clearly smuggling budgies, all seems right as rain. That is, up until Chad starts posing on the beach oh, and gets a harpoon through his face for his troubles. It's good to see that Jason hasn't lost his comic timing over the years. What a Ledge. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight hilarious moments in otherwise truly terrifying horror video games. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I do streaming every Wednesday and Sunday. 
But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Even though we detailed today about truly horrifying moments, it was about looking at them in a different light that made us being able to laugh at them. And you know what? I feel like we can apply that to our real lives as well. Sometimes we can absolutely have to deal with true horrors in our lives, unfair situations and things that just feel like they will never get any better. But you know what, my friend? With the right perspective, attitude and support from friends, family and professionals in the support industry, you can turn them into situations where everyone will be laughing in the long run. You are not alone. You do not have to suffer in silence. And all I wish is for you to have the best possible life you can have. As always, I've been Jules. You. I love Jules. Me too. And hey, how do you think we got our dark humor? True. Um, I was going to say, I love that he said it's nice to know that Jason hasn't left, uh, lost his comedic timing over the years because Mojo did not like the uh, remake of Jason and was using the example where the dude in the speedboat gets skewered through the head with the harpoon as one of the things that she well I mean it was what a clip that she tried chose. too hard to be funny I think is what she yeah said. and I was like I thought that was really funny like right. I thought that was one of the most comedic kills of the entire thing so thank you thank you Jules because, I, I mean, that's pretty much the same there. Some of those bikini options, though, that's like a subway ticket and two stamps. So, I mean, you know, options. Um, The big, the biggest bummer to the Friday the 13th game, and it's what he was talking about at the beginning. So, they had this whole roadmap of DLC that they were going to add to the game. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, the rights to the movie got into a legal battle with the original creator, and then the oh. company... It was really fucked up, and it ended up halting progress on being able to put out the rest of the DLC that they wanted to. Right. Like, they had, like, two or three more maps they wanted to put out. They wanted to put out a couple more figures of Jason from other movies. Like, they, right. at one point, they wanted to add the Jason X costume okay. from Jason All X, right. um, among other things. And, like, in the end, they were just never able to put DLC out. Like, ever. Right. And it was such a bummer because I feel like that DLC would have helped finish off the game in a way that it would have kept fully it alive longer. And yeah, yeah. That and they sucks. just that got sucks. fucked out of it. And Those then they turned around and made a Predator game. That's not that great. Oh. Most of these were really funny. Like, I'm not sure because obviously we weren't in the moment in terms of the tension and playing and whatnot. So I can't say that, I mean, obviously I didn't jump for absolutely any of the stuff. Um, so other than a mild case of mo motion sickness, you know. Um. Oh, this is a... I'm going to show you what I felt should have been, been yeah. in this game. Laughing fit. Oh my god. Well, shit. <gasps> my booze! No! No! Why can't I fall to my knees and cry to the Lord above? It's so dark. Why the booze? And why is this thing still unaffected? Every time I walk. Okay, alright. Oh, okay, I get it. So every time I turn to follow the child, the hallway breaks. So let's just run forward. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's almost kind of like what I did to my face. All right. Now, does he start going back and forth and doing I don't know. Right now, he's broken. <laughs> <I> just ran <laughs> into Oh, that's oh fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> just listening to him laugh. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know if it's because I'm tired or what, but that was fucking No, funny. it's... Okay. Try it again. 
Nancy. <laughs> was a t <laughs> he went into hysterics. <sighs> that was beautiful at the top. <laughs> again? So are you watching? He's doing it again. So you're chasing the child. <laughs> you're chasing the kid. Here, let's chase the kid a little bit. <laughs> to see if it's the sound effect is amazing. <sighs> oh no, see, he's <laughs> he's taking too much time to laugh in between. You just backed up and kept going. <laughs> Ah, uh, there he starts. There he starts. Where's the trigger? <laughs> that sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's what I did. I think that's amazing, and I think that that should have been top of the list, not just an honorable mention. Exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm so disappointed Jules did not yeah. think to put this in there, because that that's is... That's funny. Because this game, legit, so this is the first Layers of Fear. Boing! And it's one of the few games that the jump scares actually got me pretty consistently. Like, you're right. playing through, something will pop. I was like, oh, shit. Right. Okay, that was a good one. All right. Good one. I'm proud of All you. Right. But then, then you this. get to this point. And then this. And right. you're like... What? What? Okay. Yeah. And yeah. So, there is that. Anyways, I just... I feel like that shouldn't even be honorable mention. I feel like that should have been on the list. Right. So there you go. It's on our. There it's on the go. end of our list as number zero. It is number zero because it is that damn good. Right. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> I guess we're done. With that being said, if you guys liked the video, slash that like button, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Comment down below. What did you think of what culture horrors? Um, top eight. Hilarious. Hilarious moments, moments and terrifying video, video games. games. Yeah. Or something along those Otherwise lines. terrifying, yeah. So, something like that. Um, also, comment down below if there's anything else you guys want to see reacted to. Check the description below for all the things. Push our buttons. Come join us on our other social media platforms. Mostly Twitter if you want a quicker response. We will try and stay away from gaming things for a while so that she doesn't die on me. Mm -hmm. My eyes actually feel quite... Um, Angry. Like a f weird kind of fatigued fuzzy, yeah, from... Yeah. yeah. All right. So, with that being said, we love y'all. Thank y'all for watching. Can I wait to see you? Great people later.